So for uh, number nine, we're trying to prove these statements, uh, but we're doing something a little bit different. We're beginning with our conclusion and then working backwards. So sometimes this is a, a good strategy because it, it might not be so obvious where to begin a proof, but you definitely know what the conclusion is. So I've written here the premises, uh, which is that x and y are non-negative real numbers, and the conclusion. So we're going to develop the conclusion here. Um, so what I'm going to do is I want to square both sides to get rid of that root. But before I square, I'm going to bring the 2 to the um, right-hand side, just so that it's easier when I square it. So then I'm going to say that, okay, x, x plus y is greater than or equal to 2 root x, y. So now I'm going, to, um, I'm going to square both sides. So I have here that x plus y squared is greater than or equal to uh, 2 root x, i squared. And then uh, when I square this, I'm just going to expand the left-hand side. So then I have that x squared plus 2xy plus y squared is greater than or equal to uh, 2 squared is 4. And that square is just going to get rid of the roots, so 4xy. And I'm going to bring everything over to the left-hand side. So when I bring everything over to the left-hand side, I'm going to have here, uh, so that's x squared. And then I'm going to have plus 2xy minus 4xy, so minus 2xy, and then plus y squared. So that is greater than or equal to 0. And now I'm going to factor. So uh, if you were to complete the square here, this would factor into um, x minus y squared is greater than or equal to zero. So once I do this, now my proof makes sense because my assumption is that x and y are non-negative real numbers. So if they are non-negative real numbers, uh, it follows that. So, so it follows that uh, x minus y squared is greater than or equal to zero. And so if this is true, then all of the rest that we've done is just is true as well, right? And so um, we, we use the fact that they are non-negative uh, right here, because if that weren't the case, then I might not be able to take the square root, right? So um, I use that to, to put it in the square root. And so that is it for item A. I completed this proof working backwards. Now let's go to item B. So item B, I've written it here. And item B, we uh, our hypothesis is that A, B, and C are integers, and A divides B, and A divides B plus C. So what I want to conclude is that A divides 3C. So if A divides 3C, it must mean that, um, it must mean that 3C is equal to uh, A, K, for some k belonging to the set of integers, right? And where am I going with this? Well, I want to show here that a divides c, not 3c, but c, because I have a c here kind of by itself in my, in my hypothesis. So I want to be able to show that my conclusion is that a divides c. So for a to divide c, I'm just going to say, okay, then k is equal to 3m, right? Uh, k is equal to 3m for some m belonging to the set of integers. So if k is equal to 3m, then what I'm going to say here is that 3c is equal to a. Remember that k is equal to 3m, so 3m. And then if we divide both sides by 3, we have that c is equal to a m, right? And actually, maybe this is where the line for that m is an integer where it would come in. And I guess that this is where this line would come in right here. Okay. So once I have this, uh, my conclusion then is that a, so I have that a divides, a divides c, right? If c is equal to a m, then a divides c. Okay, so once I'm at the point that a divides c, now I'm going to start working my hypothesis and see if I can meet those two in the middle, right? So if a divides b and a divides c, then we can say then there exists uh, integers d and e, d and e belonging to the set of integers, 
such that um, we're going to have that B is equal to, let's see, equal to AD, and we're going to have that B plus C is equal to AE. Okay, so now I want to get just C by itself. So what I'm going to do is uh, plug in this equation here into the second one. So then I have that uh, AD plus C is equal to uh, AE. And so once I have this, I'm going to have that C is equal to AE minus AD. And C is equal to, I'm going to factor out the A, E minus D. And so we're going to say here that E minus D belongs to the set of integers. So, um, so A divides C, right? That we've proved it. And now the only tweaking that we have to do here is um, we have that C is equal to A times E minus D. And I have here that C is equal to AM. So what I have to do here is I'm just going to say for M is equal to for m is equal to e minus d, right? And that is it. So I've worked, I began working this backwards and then I got to the middle and then I, I worked it from the hypothesis and then I had the proofs meet in the middle, right? So we can see here that the, um, the argument follows and therefore we have proved that a divides, um, a divides 3c. And so that is that is it for item B. Now let's move on for to item C, which I put over here. So item C, we have that our hypothesis is that A, B, and C are integers, um, and A, B is greater than zero, and B, C is less than zero. So in this case, um, our conclusion is going to be that A, X squared plus B, X plus C has two real solutions. So let's begin working backwards from the conclusion. Well, we know that if it has two real solutions, then what happens is that uh, the discriminant has to be greater than zero, right? So we have that, that uh, b squared minus 4ac is greater than zero. So this is what we're looking for. So because this is what we are looking for, we can't really do anything here anymore. So we're going to have to develop our uh, hypothesis, right, where we begin. So we have that AB is greater than zero and BC is less than zero. So it means that AB, which is positive, times BC, which is negative, well, this product is going to be less than zero. And so it means that uh, B squared times AC is less than zero. Um, b squared is positive, right? Because any uh, any integer squared is positive. So it means that ac is less than zero. And well, if ac is less than zero, it means that negative ac, it's going to be negative times a negative number. So that's going to be greater than zero. And if negative ac is greater than zero, then four times, uh, four times negative ac is definitely greater than zero, right? And we can add b squared to it because b squared is a positive number. And so we have that b squared minus 4ac is greater than zero. And so we can see here that our proof has connected, right? And so we, we began working backwards to the point that b squared minus 4ac was greater than for AC is greater than zero. We knew what we were looking for, and then we developed our hypothesis to meet uh, what we were looking for. And so that is it for item C. Let's go to item D. So item D, it says uh, the hypothesis is that x is a real number and that x cubed plus 2x squared is less than 0. And so we want to show that 2x plus 5 is less than 11. So over here, once more, we're going to um, begin working backwards. So from here, we're going to go that, okay, then 2x, I'm just going to bring that 5 to the other side, is going to be less than or equal to 11 minus 5, which is equal to 6. And then I'm going to divide both sides by 2. So then I have that x is less than 3. So I've worked here enough. I can't do anything further, right? There's nothing else that I can, I can prove here. Um, so what I'm going to do is and now I'm going to work the hypothesis and see if I can get these two to meet, right? So... Um, over here, I'm going to factor out an x squared. So I have then that x squared 
times x plus 2 is less than 0. Well, x squared is positive, right? So if x squared is positive, um, because uh, x, any no real number squared is going to be positive if it's not 0, and we know that x can't be 0 because it's less than. So we have that x squared is positive, therefore, therefore, x plus 2 is less than 0. So if x plus 2 is less than 0, it means that x is less than negative 2. So if x is less than negative 2, then x is definitely less than 3 because, because uh, 3 is greater than negative 2, right? So if x is less than negative 2, then x is definitely less than 3. So uh, x is less than 3, so it means that 2x is less than 6, and then 2x plus 5 is less than 11. So that is it. Um, that's how we work backwards. We saw, we got to a point where we had to stop, then we began working normally, and had those two points meet together. So that is it for item D. And now we're just missing item E. Now I didn't have space to write it, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, to write it here. And we're going to do uh, as we've always done, which is write the hypothesis, write the conclusion, and then try to get both of them to meet somewhere. So for E, our hypothesis is that uh, for real numbers, for real numbers, x, y, z. So our hypothesis is that an isosceles triangles has side has sides of length x, y, and z, where x is equal to y and z is equal to uh, root of 2xy. So that's for real numbers x, y, and z, let, so we're going to say let, uh, let, an, let an isosceles triangle, isosceles triangle, have sides x, y and z where x is equal to y and z is going to be equal to square root of 2 um 2xy okay <clears throat> so if they um so that is our hypothesis and so our conclusion we want to show that then it is a triangle right then then the triangle is a right triangle. Okay, so that's our conclusion. So let's work backwards. Well, we know that if, um, if a triangle is a right triangle, it means that the side square is equal to the square, uh, the sum of the side square is equal to the square of the hypotenuse hypotenuse right and x is equal to y so we know that these two must be the sides um, and that z must be the hypotenuse so we have here that therefore that x squared plus y squared is going to be um, this is going to be equal to z squared right and um, let's think about how we are going to develop this right how we can reason about it um, and so what I want to do here is I want to have, uh, I want to get rid of this z squared because I have that z is equal to something. So I want to take the square root of that. So in order to take the square root, um, for me not to have this whole mess on the left-hand side, I need to turn the left-hand side into, um, into a perfect square, right? So I need to turn it into a perfect square. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go x squared um, minus... 2xy plus y squared plus 2xy is equal to z squared. So what I did here is I just added and removed uh, 2xy, so nothing changed. But when I did this, it's going to allow me to express uh, this stuff here as a perfect square. So this is going to be here. This is going to be, let's see, that's going to be x minus y squared and then I have plus 2xy is equal to z squared okay and also going from this step here to sorry going from 
this step, where is my arrow? Going from this step here to this step, we could also have thought, hey, our z is 2xy, it's root 2xy. So I need to have 2xy show up somewhere, right? So all I did was I removed 2xy and I added 2xy just because I know that that's what I'm looking for. And so we were able to do this, right? Um, but we have here that x is equal to y, right? So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to develop from the hypothesis. So if x is equal to y, it means that x minus y is equal to 0. And so x minus y squared is also equal to 0, right? And so what I have here, if x minus y squared is equal to 0, then um, now I can work backwards. So now I can say here that uh, 0 plus 2, actually I should have... I should have uh, changed the order here. So I should have done, let me go that x minus y is equal to zero. So x minus y squared is also equal to zero. And if that is equal to zero, then I have that two x y is equal to z squared and thus root uh, 2xy is equal to z. Cool. So this one we were able um, to work it almost entirely backwards, right? Where we begin with the conclusion, and we know that if it is a right triangle, then we need we have that x squared plus y squared is equal to z squared. Um, from there, we made the term root 2xy show up, and that was it. So hopefully this showed you guys that working backwards sometimes is a really nice thing to do because it makes the reasoning more clear.